whenever we are looking at some important terms with related to quantum computers then we have a very important term called as binary quadratic models and these are particularly important because this is the only language that the current quantum computer by d wave understands so whenever you want to give a problem or submit it to a quantum processing unit then essentially you have to convert it into a binary quadratic model and then this model can then be processed by the quantum processing unit and then it can give you a good output so now let's dive into some more details of what a binary quadratic model actually is by looking at the mathematics behind it so now whenever you look at the word called binary quadratic model it is made up of three words the first one is binary which stands for two states or two variables so that is something which we'll be looking so over here we have two variables which are x and y so if you can see we have a function called as q which is a function of x and y so there are x and y values which are then dependent on q so as you change the value of x and y the value of q changes so q is called a dependent variable and x and y are called independent variables so over here we have two variables x and y so that is the first part of the name which is binary then we have the name uh, then we have the word quadratic and quadratic essentially means the second degree or anywhere if you square a variable then you can say that you are forming a quadratic equation so similarly over here we also have a quadratic equation because we have x squared and y squared so over here and as we have two variables then the equation is also mixed with having x y so in this way we create a lot of different forms of binary quadratic equations and then a lot of different problems can then be established onto these binary quadratic equations and then what the d wave computer actually gives you out is an optimal equation or an optimal value of a b and c and based on those values you create an output which you want okay so now with that out of the way let's look at an example where we are going to use a binary quadratic model okay so over here for constraint scheduling this particular task is dependent on the time location and length of a particular different aspect okay so for now let's say it is dependent on time and then over here then by looking at the different values of time you get different output values and d wave basically does the task of creating a complex binary quadratic model for you and instead you only have to specify a particular characteristic function which contains all of the conditions together and then you can form a binary quadratic model so now the obvious question which arises is that why don't classical computers also use binary quadratic models okay so over here this is a 3d graph function and if we plot a simple graph of z is equal to and we have x over here then it is a slanting plane then we have z is equal to x plus y and then let's add xy as well over here okay so over here as you can see this is a parabola which has been stretched outwards okay and if we also have okay so yep yeah, this is the graph for now which is being created okay it looks a little bit strange but this is how a quantum computer actually looks at complicated three dimensional graphs and then gives you a minimum value on based on where the local minima is been found so essentially over here all that the annular does is that it looks at the graph and not in a literal sense this is a good analogy which i like to use where you are looking at a particular graph but in the case of quantum computers you don't look at a graph but essentially you have a quantum annular and due to the process of quantum tunneling you have the entire solution space scanned at a particular instant okay so over here if you are looking at a simple graph then you don't need to tell yourself which is the minimum point 
because over here if you were to think of this particular problem by using a classical computer then you would have to calculate the value at each and every point and then look for the minimum point but then in this particular case by just looking at it we can determine the lowest point in one instant so that is how essentially quantum computers work like similar to human beings where it can analyze the entire solution space at once and then give you an output accordingly so this is why binary quadratic models are very important and later on in this particular course we'll be setting up a lot of different binary quadratic models based on what characteristic we are providing to the quantum computer and now the obvious reason for keeping it a binary quadratic model and not making it a unary or tertiary quadratic model which has one or three variables is because whenever you have a qubit then you have two input states which is a 0 or a 1 or any superposition between them but essentially the two possible states are 0 and 1 so over here that is why you have two different inputs as your initial parameter and then you have an output which is a function of all of those inputs so now later on whenever we are looking at quantum circuits in detail in circ in the section where we have studied circ we have looked at some basic quantum gates Okay, so over here, if you look at AND, then the OR gate, then the NOT gate, then all of these gates have a particular equation or a logic equation. And that is how whenever you establish a particular uh, binary quadratic equation, then it is very easy to create a quantum circuit based on that particular binary quadratic equation. Okay, so this is basically it about binary quadratic equations which we need to understand for now in order to create good quality programs. There is a lot of different mathematical details which go behind transforming something like this which looks so simple and then converting it into something like this which looks very complicated. But you are more than welcome to browse through the mathematics of all these things. I'll have these particular resources linked in the lecture resource in the top right corner somewhere over here top left corner somewhere over here. So yes, that is pretty much it for this particular lecture. If you have some doubts or if you want some more resources, then feel free to ask me out in the question and answer section of this particular course or even feel free to leave me a message or even join my discord server which I have linked over here in the lecture resources as well. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the binary quadratic model section. I hope you found these glimpses from my online course interesting. For more in-depth explanation, hands-on experience and making real-life applications on this topic, refer to the course link given in the description section below. This link will also provide you a massive discount on the price.